Welcome everyone to Better Than Success Mastermind. This is an additional extra mastermind that we are doing. And so I wanna welcome everyone to joining us today. Um, and before we get started, um, before Dean gets started, I'm gonna go over the Better Than Success core values. So the first core value is courage. Um, league members must have the courage to make the necessary sacrifices to positively and permanently impact the lives of their families as well as their own life. Core value number two is integrity. League members must do business in the marketplace with the highest level of integrity even when no one is looking. Core value number three, stewardship. League members know that the resources they are entrusted with are not their own, but rather they belong to a higher power and we are simply stewards over said resources. Core value number four, strategy. League members do not make investment decisions without a clear and defined strategy. Core value number five, legacy and love. Each league member is always motivated by a why that's always bigger than the indi individual member and always rooted in leaving wealth to their children's children. Core value number six, begin with the league. League members understand that we are stronger together, therefore we prioritize doing business with each other whenever possible. And core value number seven, adventure. League members understand that the journey to success is an adventure with ups and downs, so we might as well have fun while on the ride. And so we do have a few members only events coming up today, September 19th, creating a tax advantage lifestyle, equity and trust. Um, September 26th, the wealth building workshop, which is gonna be 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then October 3rd, the real estate financing and hard money Q&A, which is 4.30 p.m. and 6, to 6.30 p.m. Every Tuesday, we have the virtual group deal hunting and analysis lunch hour. That is every Tuesday at 1, 1 p.m. and it is members only. So join us there to um, look at how we analyze deals and also for some deals. There are usually many of our wholesalers pop some deals in there as well. So um, join us for that. And we do have the um, virtual four week intensive cohorts, course cohort number four, September 26th, October 3rd, October 10th, October 17th. Members get 46% off, so check the group chat for the discount code, um, and that does start September 26th. And then we also have the two-day intensive virtual wholesaling academy, Saturday, November 7th, and Sunday, November 8th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., members only. Um, and you know, we do have some payment plan, plans available. And if you guys can, please post this lecture on social media, tag us at better than success, use hashtag better than success. And so we are gonna get started, Dean. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can go ahead and share, share your screen. Awesome. Let's and see, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get mine up. Give me a second here. And you should be able to see my slides now. All right. Good morning, everybody. I uh, hope everybody is having a wonderful Saturday morning. Uh, I want to thank everybody, first of all, for taking the time out to join us on this uh, beautiful sunny morning. It's, uh, uh, it's very, very sunny here in Ohio, a little bit chilly. But hey, that's okay. Uh, I am Dean Manzetti. I am the National Speaker Business, Develop, Business Development Facilitator, that's a lot of words, uh, with Equity Trust. And uh, I want to thank, first of all, Better Than Success um, for having me on the webinar this morning. It's probably been about a year or so. Uh, I was out um, in your area doing a live presentation. So one of these days, we'll get back to doing live probably next year sometime. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you, everybody, for taking time out of your busy Saturday morning uh, to join us. I'm going to be spending about the next uh, 60 minutes or here uh, or so uh, going over self-directed IRAs. Uh, what are they? 
uh, how do they work. Uh, there's seven different ones. Now, I'm not going to cover all seven this morning just because we don't have the time to do that. Uh, but I am going to tell you how you can get a lot of additional information. I'm going to kind of give you the self-directed IRA 101, 102 today, and we're going to tell you how you can get uh, the 201, 301 here uh, throughout the course of the webinar this morning. Uh, but a good portion of what I want to talk about today are uh, success stories and case studies. These are actual clients of mine and actual clients of Equity Trust, because that's what you folks want to hear. You want to hear, hey, what are people like me doing? Why are they doing it? What are they doing? How are they doing it? What are their results? Uh, and I've got four or five really cool case studies to share. And as we wrap it up, uh, we'll talk a little bit about exactly who Equity Trust is. Uh, I'm not here to sell you anything, so let's get that out of the way uh, very, very first. Uh, we don't sell anything. We don't have anything to sell. We don't have courses, nothing like that. We've got a lot of education, and we give all of our education away for free. Uh, and either once you get educated, you open up an account with us or you don't open up an account. You know, this may be right for you and it may not be right for you. Hopefully by the end of this morning and uh, the end of our workshop next week, uh, this will be right for you. Um, and then we'll talk about how easy it is to get started. Uh, and then a little bit about equity trust, uh, exactly who we are uh, and, and all the different things that we do. Um, as I said, I'm going to spend about the next 60 minutes here. Now, I'll be happy to take any of your questions. I've already uh, popped my email address in the chat feature. So if you've got any questions, go ahead, throw them in the chat there. I'll be glad to hang around the end of our webinar this morning. I'll answer any and all questions that we have, but I'll tell you what, probably about 95% of your questions are gonna be answered throughout my presentation uh, because I always gear my presentation towards you know, the questions that I get. And it's usually the same questions over and over and over. Uh, so you're probably going to get your question answered on one of the slides today, but that's okay. Uh, if you can think of a question maybe you didn't see or you didn't hear, you know, pop it in the chat. Also, the reason, the couple reasons my email's there, I'm going to be giving away some free educational material, so I need you folks to email me. But also, if you happen to think of something maybe later today or tomorrow or next week, and you say, oh man, you know, I wish I forgot to ask Dean, I wish I would have asked him that, uh, you know, feel free, feel free to, uh, you know, shoot me an email and be glad to answer any of those questions. So first thing I want everybody to do, as we mentioned here at the beginning, we've got a wealth building workshop coming up next Tuesday, September 22nd, 6 to 930 p.m. Make sure you register. This is absolutely 100% free. This is going to build on what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, these are fabulous workshops. My partner, John Bowens, is one of the absolute best. I think he's the best in our industry from everyone I've seen. Uh, great speaker, the most knowledgeable person that I know um, when it comes to uh, self-directed IRA. So uh, we'll be sending that link out. Uh, Better Than Success will be sending that link out. And I, I've already seen a whole bunch of people have already registered for it. So I encourage you, don't miss out on this uh, belt wealth building workshop uh, next Tuesday here. It'll be here before you know it. So uh, also uh, the, ultimate res uh, the ultimate real estate investors resource guide. This is a 22 page resource guide. This is good for any kind of investor, whether you're brand new, uh, whether you're intermediate or whether you're highly advanced. This is a great resource guide. There's a lot of strategies in there, how to manage properties, whole bunch of different strategies. Um, there's some information in there from real estate investors giving you tips as well as educators. This is absolutely 100% free. Because all you got to do is shoot me an email and I will send this to you. And, and again, my email is at the beginning. It's in the chat box. It's d.manzetti, M-A-N-Z-E-T-T-I at trustetc.com. Make sure you shoot me an email. I'll be happy to send that to you for free. First thing I want everybody to do, uh, take some notes today. Here's the first note I want you to take compounding interest in the absence of taxation. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about this and on, on Tuesday, John talk a lot about this. So what does this mean? What this means is how do I take money from my taxable bucket and get it into the tax-free or the tax-deferred bucket? Now there is a difference and we're gonna talk about what those differences are, the tax-free and the tax-deferred, but that's what that is. But before we get started here real quick, just a real quick disclaimer, as I mentioned, uh, Equity Trust and myself, I'm here strictly to give you education and education only. That's what we're known for. That's what we do. 
I am not here, we're not a fiduciary, so I am not here to give you any tax, financial, or legal advice. So with that being said, what is a self-directed IRA? Well, I'll be honest with you folks, a self-directed IRA, there really is no such thing. Um, we came up with that, we meaning we in the industry, we came up with this many, many, many years ago so we could differentiate a traditional type IRAs from self-directed IRAs. Uh, actually, one of the very first, our founder, Mr. Vic Desich, um, he did one of the first, if not the very first, self-directed IRA way back in the early 80s. Now, we've been around since 1974, a long time equity trust, but uh, he was one of the very first, if not again, the very first person in the United States to ever do a self-directed IRA with some partners. So uh, we've definitely been at it longer than anybody else. But basically what we had to decipher, okay, what's, you know, how, how do we tell the difference and what is the difference between an IRA and a self-directed? Well, just like it says, it's self-directed. You direct it yourself versus the regular ones that you may have. You already may have a 401k, IRA, uh, you know, 403b, something like that where you're working. With those, you're investing in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, your traditional investments. With self-directed IRA, uh, you're doing multiple forms of alternative asset investing with real estate and notes happen to be the two biggest out there. Uh, we here at Equity Trust, probably over 90% of our business that we do in self-directed IRAs with alternative asset investing is uh, both of those things, um, real estate and real estate notes. We actually do over a billion, that's with a B, over a billion dollars in transactions in real estate a year and over a billion dollars in notes uh, per year. So a lot of people, uh, you know, I hear, I've heard over the years or when I'm out speaking, they'll say, well, Dean, hold on a second. I I've heard or I've been told, you know, it's illegal, you know, according to publication 590A and the IRS website, it's illegal to, you know, do what you're saying. Well, it, it absolutely is not. Um, really, the, the the IRS publication 598 tells you what you cannot do. It doesn't tell you what you can do. And really, the only things that you cannot do, they all fall under collectibles like baseball cards and gems and certain amounts of coins and antiques, rugs, artworks, you know, things of that nature, certain types of metals. You also cannot invest in alcoholic beverages, and you cannot invest in an S corporation like Sam, S corporation. Other than that, you can pretty much invest in anything that you want to. Now, these are the accounts that are available out there, the seven different tax-exempt self-directed accounts. Uh, first of all, uh, and I'm going to cover four of them. I'm going to cover the two in the top in blue, the two in the bottom in red. We're not going to go over the ones in the middle there. I'll tell you why here in a moment. But first of all, you know, uh, we have a free consultation. And take me up on this free consultation. Uh, because one of the very important things is, you know, we have to figure who qualifies and who don't. There are some qualifications for these things. I'll go over them a little bit here as we uh, continue. But number one, you have to have some type of active earned income to be able to open any of these. Now, the ones in the middle in uh, green, the simple, the SEP, and the solo 401k, those are for self-employed people, and you do have to qualify for those. Unfortunately, there's a lot of companies out there letting people open these things up, and it's really not the right one for them. This is where we're going to help you with that consultation. We're going to figure out which one of these are the best for you, uh, and we're not going to cover them just due to time. You know, they're, they're a lot more uh, complex. There's a lot more rules and regulations, but the biggest thing uh, for the self-employed, the simple, the SEP, and the solo 401k, uh, as you can see there, your potential annual contributions are a lot larger than they are on the traditional, the Roth, the CESA, and the HSA. Depending on your age, you can get up to 63500 in the solo 401k, where those contribution limits are much lower uh, on the other four. So we're going we're gonna to talk about those other four, but uh, here's one thing I'm, I'm uh, going to give away here real quick. I've got this book here today. This is an actual book. And I've given this away, I actually gave it away last time I was at your uh, folks meeting last year. It's uh, Self-Directed IRAs, Building Retirement Wealth Through Alternative Investing. Uh, it's 300 plus pages book by our founder, Dick Desage. Uh, for the first five people that shoot me an email and answer this question, I'm not gonna give you the answer. Would you rather tax the seed or would you rather tax the crop? Shoot me an email, tell me what your answer is. And if you get it right, I'm gonna send you a free copy of that book, d.manzetti at trustetc.com. Again, just go to the chat. My email is in there. So let me give you a, 
uh, an example. I just wanted to show you something here. Uh, this is an investment uh, outside of an IRA, a non-IRA, versus one inside of an IRA. And we took the same parameters for both of these. They both had a starting principal of $20,000 invested over a 20-year time period. We took an annual return rate of 12% in the taxation during this time period, because you gotta pay tax one way or another on these things, okay? Either taxing the seed or taxing the crop. Uh, the taxation we used was 25%. So the person on the left, outside of the IRA, as you can see there, they had accumulated $112,000. The person on the right, which was inside an IRA, either tax exempt or tax free, tax, I'm sorry, tax deferred or tax free, and we're gonna go over the differences of those two, they accumulated $80,000 more. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather be the person on the right there than on the left. Also, uh, if you've got a few dollars to spend, I'd encourage you to get this book. I don't know who David McKnight is, one of my comrades here, uh, turned me on to this book a couple of years ago. It's called The Power of Zero. David talks about what I'm showing you right there. Uh, it's about 13 bucks, it's on Amazon. Um, took me about three, three and a half hours to read. But what David does, he talks about how do you get that money from the taxable bucket and get it into the tax-free bucket. So none of your money is ever hitting your 1040. So when you're making withdrawals, all those capital gains, you're paying 0% income tax on all of that stuff. Great, great book. I'd encourage you to go out and get that thing. So let's start off with our traditional IRA. Uh, it could be one of many different types of plans. It could be a TSP, you're working for the government, a pension, a 457, a 403B, a 401K. Could be a simple or set if you're uh, self-employed. Again, I'm just gonna give you the basics here. John Bowen's my partner on Tuesday. is gonna expand a lot more onto these, but I just wanted to kind of give you, uh, you know, the, the uh, basic 101 on how these things work and some of the basic rules and regulations. There are maximum out of pocket based on your age, as you can see there. If you're under 56,000, you put in over 57,000, you can put in. Now, we talked about having earned income to open any of these up. Now, if you're married, you both do not have to be working to be eligible to open up an IRA, okay? As long as one of the two of you are working, it's called spousal contribution, you can both open one up. So. If you're 45 years old, you're working, your spouse does not work, you can both put $6,000 um, into that, okay? Also, with the traditional IRA, and, and I'm gonna go over this in the next slide because this, this is very important. There's been a lot of changes. There's a lot of uh, misinformation going on out there. Uh, you are required to take uh, minimum distributions with the traditional IRA at the age of 72. So what that means is once you hit 72, you're forced to start taking distributions because you gotta start paying taxes on them. This is why this is important. And, and it just blows my mind here for, for the last six months or so. This went into effect in March of this year. And John's gonna talk more about the Secures Act and the CARES Act. It's highly important you understand this because there's so much misinformation going on. I've been on some other webinars uh, and the people were talking about this. They knew nothing about these Secure Act changes. And this is absolutely critical you understand this. The required minimum distribution used to be 70 and a half, and people are still telling people it's 70 and a half. It is not. Prior to this year, it was 70 and a half. On January 1st, it changed. We're living longer. The government up the age of 72. So there was people that were 70 and a half, uh, you know, earlier this year after March, or actually after January, uh, and they were, you know, under the assumption that they had to start paying taxes. No, okay? It's after January 1st, you're 70 and a half, you did not have to do that, it's now 72, okay? Number one, number two, uh, when you reach the age of 70 and a half, you used to be cut off with the IRA. You were no longer allowed to make contributions, you were no longer allowed to uh, do any work with it, any, um, any transactions or, or any buying or anything, they've done away with that. You can now contribute to and invest with your traditional IRA indefinitely, there's no age limit. Number three, the stretch IRA is gone. What used to happen with these, the Roth and that, they could be inherited and then inherited again, inherited again, just keep moving on forever and ever and ever. Okay, now what has happened, they must be distributed within 10 years of receiving the inherited IRA. Uh, and there's a lot of other ones that have changed too with the SECURE Act and the CARES Act. And again, John's gonna go into a little bit more detail, but I wanted to give you these three are really the most important three that you understand that. So here's how 
the IRA that traditional IRA works. It's a tax deferred basis. As you can see there on the left, your money goes in on a tax deferred basis. So you are getting the write off on that money that you put in, it's going into the IRA. Now when you reach that magical age of 59 and a half, you are allowed to start taking distributions on that. But you've got to pay taxes. This is called taxing the crop, okay? If you take distributions before 59 and a half, there will be a 10% penalty. Again, that has changed a little bit. There are some exceptions out there with COVID-19 going on. Uh, John will go over this and do a little bit more detail. Uh, you know, with the situation, again, there's exceptions where you may not have to pay that withdrawal penalty, but basically you take it out before 59 and a half, you're going to be hit up with the penalty at 59 and a half, post 59 and a half, you're going to pay ordinary income taxes. Okay. Whatever effective tax rate you fall under, that's what you're going to be responsible for. So as you can see here, let's say you've accumulated a million dollars in your traditional IRA over the life that you had it. You'd like to take a distribution of $100,000, you're now 59 and a half, you can do that. We used a 20% effective tax rate because it's easy math. You're now gonna be required to pay $20,000 in taxes because this money will hit your 1040, it's going to hit your earned income. So you've gotta pay taxes on it. That's taxing the crop. There's a better way to do it with the Roth IRA. And I gotta tell you folks, if you don't have a Roth IRA, you need to get one. I had somebody on a webinar that was a little bit older, you know, and they asked me, well, you know, maybe I'm too old to get a Roth. No, you're not. You're never too old to get a Roth. Doesn't matter what your age is, okay? Everyone should have a Roth, all right? Now, the way the Roth works, very similar to the traditional IRA. There's a lot of similarities, uh, but we can also do with the Roth, we can do what's called um, conversions or transfers. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. The maximum out of pocket's exactly the same as the traditional six and 7,000. It's got the spousal contribution, just like the traditional. Uh, the, one of the biggest benefits with the Roth is there are no required minimum distributions. Let me repeat that. Like the traditional at 72, you got to start taking money out. You don't take any money out with the Roth. You can have it indefinitely and then have it inherited to, you know, whoever you wish. No required minimum distributions. This is the way the Roth works. This is the way you want to do it. This is the correct answer I'm giving you right now. You want to tax the seed, all right? And that's what we're doing here. The money on the front end that goes in, you're not getting that tax write-off. You're paying the taxes on that money. The money's going in, it's tax-free growth. Now you reach the age of 59 and a half. That money that you take out of there, you will pay 0% income tax on it. So let's say today you put your, your whatever, you're 40 years old, you put $6,000 in there, you fall under 20%, you pay your 1,200 bucks, that $6,000 starting today in the next 20 years grows to that same million dollars and you want to start taking on $100,000 a year, you're going to pay 0% income tax. That money never hits your 1040 because you paid on the seed. Now, there are some requirements that you do need to know because a lot of people, again, misinformation. They've been told, well, Dean, I've been told I make too much money. I just had this a week ago. I've been told I make too much money and I am not eligible to contribute to a Roth IRA. That is true, that is not true. Okay, depending on uh, how much money you make, if you're single or you're married, as you can see, if you're single, if you make uh, up to 124,000, you can do the full contribution. If you make between 124 and 139, you can only do a partial. If you make over 139, they say that you cannot contribute to a Roth. Same for married. Up to 196, you can do the full. 196 to 206, you can do a partial. If you make over 206, you cannot open up a Roth. But there is such a thing called a backdoor Roth contribution. And John's going to get into this and, and really whiteboard it uh, and show you that basically what we're going to do here, we're going to open up a traditional because a traditional does not have these requirements. You make, you know, you make a million dollars, open up a traditional. If you make a traditional, and we convert it or we backdoor it into a Roth. That's the way around it. Here's how it works. Or let's say you've already got a traditional already opened up somewhere, or you've got a TSP, or you've got a 401k, or you got a 403b, whatever it may be. And again, you know, take us up on this free consultation because this is where we can help you to figure out what's the best strategy for you to do. So in this instance, let's say you've got some money sitting out there. And I talk to a lot of people. I say, you know, do you have an IRA? Yeah, what's it doing? Just sitting there. Do you have a 401k? Well, yeah, I worked at this company and I left and it's just been sitting there, all right? 
you can take that money out of there and you can convert it into the Roth. Now remember, the money is going to be number one added to your ordinary income, so you are going to be responsible for paying the taxes because we talked about taxing the seed. So let's say you've got 100,000, you want to put it into the Roth, you fall under the 20% effective tax rate, 100,000 goes into the Roth, now you've got the money in there, you can start doing deals and transactions, but you got to pay the $20,000, okay? You got to pay the seed to get that money in there. Now, a lot of people will ask, well, Dean, I'd love to do this, but I can't afford to pay that much taxes. Well, it's great, there's another way, okay? We can do conversions. What can you afford? How much can you pay in taxes? Well, you know, I could probably pay 10 grand. Great, let's do this. You got 100, let's put 50,000 into the Roth, 20%, once you fall under your tax bracket, that's $10,000. We've now got money into the Roth to start doing deals, to start growing it, number one. Number two, we can take that other 50,000 and we can convert that any at another date at another time and do it as many times as long as it takes. There's no restriction. So maybe next year we take another 25,000, put it in there and you pay 5,000 in taxes and two or three years down the road, we take the last 25,000 and uh, convert it over to the Roth and get the 5,000 out of the way. So you can do it that way. Again, best thing I'd encourage you, if, if you do fall into this situation, take us up on our uh, free consultation uh, and you're not obligated on, any, obligated on anything. And this is just a consultation. We gotta figure out if this is right for you. If it's right for you, we either move forward or we don't move forward. That's it, it's pretty simple. Third account here, this is one of my favorite accounts, uh, and I just got one actually a, a few years ago, a health savings account. This is the only account out there that's got the triple tax advantage savings. I'll go over that in a minute, but basically it's, it's a savings account. That's all it is. You're putting money in on the front end there, all right, just like you're putting money into your bank. That money, you're getting a tax deduction on the deposit. The deposit's going into the plan. It's getting tax deferred growth. Now, when you take the money out, to distribute it uh, for distribution. It's tax-free as long as you're using it for medical care. So number one, you're getting a tax deductible deposit. Number two, the growth is tax deferred. Number three, it's tax-free when you take the money out as long as you're using it for medical care. A couple things you need to know. Don't confuse this with an FSA, a flexible spending account. Those are the types that if you don't use it, you lose it. This doesn't work that way. All right, number one, it's got to be used with a HDHP, a high deductible health plan. Number two, contribution limits are a little bit different and the age is a little bit different. You're under the age of 55 and single, you can put in 3550. If you're over the age of 55, you can put in another 1000, 4550, and that doubles for the family. The family is 7100 uh, or 8100, depending on your age. And again, it has to be used for qualified medical expenses. Last one we're gonna cover here before we get into the fun part of our presentation is the CESA, the Coverdale Education. Works somewhat similar, DHSA, it's got a smaller limit. $2,000 can be used K through graduate school. It grows tax-free just like the HSA, as long as the money that you're taking out is used for qualified educational expenses. You're not gonna pay any taxes on it. A couple of things you need to know. Number one, the child has to be under the age of 18 to be able to open this account for them. Number two, when they reach the age of 30, they do have to disperse this account, all right? Uh, it, it's like the other one, the required minimum distribution. Well, when they hit 30, they gotta distribute this. There's a couple things you can do. If you've got another child or a grandchild, you can transfer this account to them as long as they're under the age of 18. If your child who has this, let's say they get married and they have, they have a child, and as long as they're under the age of 18, they can now transfer that to their child. Uh, and also, if you have a special needs child, uh, the age of 30 uh, does, not, um, does not pertain to them. The special needs child can have the CISA account indefinitely. So with that being said, now, you know, as you see these limits and you see the amount of money, and I get this all the time, I just had somebody uh, on my webinar, I think it was on um, Thursday night, you know, they said, well, Dean, I don't have a lot of money to invest in anything. I don't have five or $6,000. That's okay, all right? We're gonna show you different ways that you can partner. You know, you, you can put $500 and grow these accounts, all right? And there's 10 different ways to partner. Uh, now, I'm not gonna go over all 10 of them, just obviously due to, due to our uh, time constraints. I'm not gonna cover the non-recourse loans, but John will. John's gonna go over a lot more detail and different ways to partner, but I'm gonna show you four or five different ways that you can partner. Now, I will get a lot of people that stop me. I was just on 
um, a uh, competitor's webinar early because I listened into them. I'd like to hear what they say. And they were saying, you know, well, you're not allowed to partner because according to uh, IRS regulation publication 4975, uh, these people up and down the linear tree are disqualified people, and it states right there that you can't partner with them. It's absolutely true. That's exactly what 4975 reads. But if you continue to read it and you continue to educate yourself like we're going to do, if you're doing it the way that we teach you how to do it, you can absolutely do it. You can partner with your own money. You can partner with other people's accounts. You can partner with your spouse. You can partner with your children, your grandchildren, other investors, somebody's business. You absolutely can do that. We're going to show you today. That's what I'm here for, to teach and to educate exactly how you do that. Um, now, here's our first, first uh, one that I want to go over. Uh, it's our family model, Jan, Gary, and Brittany, longtime client of uh, Equity Trust. And um, I happen to know Jan and Gary personally. Uh, they came to us in about 2009. So about 11 years they've been with us. Jan and Gary, longtime seasoned real estate folks, higher end properties, they buy and they sell. Uh, they came to one of our meetings like this. Uh, they ended up attending one of our workshops. Uh, they approached us and they said, you know what, we've got about $120,000. Uh, it's just been sitting there. Uh, we haven't made a lot of money on it. We've lost some. Uh, you know, we love what we hear. We want to open up some Ross. We want to take control of our financial future and put and uh, take this money, put it into Ross, get the tax out of the way, and, uh, and, and we want to grow our retirement. And that's what they did. And they did the family model, uh, the Ledoux Estates. I'm going to show you exactly how Ledoux Estates works. Now, very important you follow along here, these percentages. Uh, remember when I talked about disqualified people, obviously they're partnering with each other. So what you have to do, the deal has to be done proportionately. So the money that goes out percentage wise into the deal, including all expenses, rehab, any work that needs to be done, all has to be split proportionately and the money coming back into the IRA has to be that same percentage coming back proportionately. That's what the 55, the 42, and the 3 is. So let me go into a little bit more detail and explain how this works, okay? Here's an overview of this particular project. They, now, this was their, I think, their fifth deal that they did, and you don't have to do a lot of these deals, especially if you have a good amount of money to get started. They started off with 120000 um, and I'll tell you at the end here how much they have today. They only do one or two of these a year. But again, this was about their fifth deal that they did in 2013, seven years ago. Property was 306000 Jan was responsible for 42% of that. Gary's 55 and Brittany's three. So here's the breakdown. Gary's Roth paid 55% or 168000 of the 306. Jan's Roth or 42% of the 306 is 125000 Brittany's Roth, uh, 3% of the 306,000 was 9,200. There was earnest money down. Again, everything's gotta be done proportionately. That's the EMD. The EMD was 3,000, has to be broken up exactly the same. 3,000, 55% of that is 1,650. 42% of 3,000 is 1,260. And 3% uh, of the uh, 3,000 for Brittany is $90 for her, her EMD. Renovations. 296,000, again, had to be done proportionately. 55% of that are 163 out of Gary's, 42% out of Jan's or 124, 3% out of Brittany's or just under 8,900. Now, back when they did this deal, um, and this, this is a, a kind of a, uh, something we've heard a lot over the years, but not any longer with equity trust, you know, all these deals take too long. It takes too long to open up an account. The paperwork to get processed takes forever. It takes two, three weeks. Checks got to be sent out. It, it's too, you know, it's too time consuming. Uh, you know, we can't get deals done in time. It's very cumbersome. And that was true back then. Back then when they did this seven years ago, every time a portion of a home had to get renovated, they had to send out a check, which meant one out of Gary's, one out of Jan's, one out of Brittany's, another portion of a home got done. Had to do that all again. Second check out of Gary's, Jan's, Brittany, so forth and so on. Since then, we've come out with our online portal, My Equity. 99% uh, of all your deals, everything can be done with this online portal. No need for the paperwork, no need for wet signatures. It's all done now electronically. So we've just cut off days and weeks and virtually this can be done immediately. Uh, you can even set your tenants up 
to have the payments come back to you right into the my equity my equity is free when you open up an account this is one of the things that you get for being an account holder with equity trust absolutely free we've had this now for a few years we get calls folks every single day hey i heard about your my equity my friend has an account and they showed my equity and i'm doing the old checkbook and i'm doing this and i saw that and they're showing me how quickly i can get this done i want to transfer my account over to you folks we get new accounts every day just strictly because of this my equity online portal that we have now john is going to give you a demo of this on tuesday if you can't make it on tuesday and you're interested in opening up an account again take me up on the free consultation we'll show you a demo uh, but john will show you a demo on tuesday for those of you that will be there just a couple before and after quick pictures and now here's the sale sale of the property the proceeds were seven hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars Again, proportionately, 55% of that had to go back into Gary's or 421, 42% of Jan's or 322, and 3% of 767 had to go into Brittany's or 22 or $23,000. Now look at a couple things here, folks. Number one, they received as a family over $163,000. Folks, that's one deal. But more importantly, look at this, 90,000 tax free into Gary, 68,000 into Roth, 4,900 into Brittany's. Let's fast forward to today, all right? Brittany is now 21 years old. Brittany now has, because she's been doing these deals the last seven years with her folks, Brittany now has over six figures in her Roth IRA. How many 21 years old going in their third year of college have over $100,000 saved for their retirement? Number one, number two. She's got 40 years to grow this account. How much money do you think Brittany's gonna have in 40 years by doing this with her parents and continuing to do this? Number three, Jan and Gary in 2009, 11 years ago, started with us. As I said, they do one to two of these deals a year. That's all you gotta do. They now have over $1.3 million in their retirement for whenever they decide to retire 100% tax free. That's pretty exciting, folks. Uh, a lot of people ask, Dean, that is great. I have a question. Can we have more than one account? Absolutely. And John's going to go over this into a little bit more detail, show you your constellation of uh, wealth, how you can create this. Uh, but we've got a client, and I think John will cover him, Stan. Stan's been with us a long, long, long time. Um, and Stan has 11 accounts. He's actually got 10 accounts, plus he's got one account for his in-laws. And he partners all those accounts, and he's been able to... Uh, uh, take advantage of that over the years and he's been with us and partnered them all up i um, mean he started off with a, a very small amount of money when he first opened up his first one he's now got a traditional a roth he's got the spousal traditional roth he's got the hsa he's got ceases for all three of his or all of his children uh, he's also got his own business so he's got the solo 401k with the roth component and his in-laws have an account he partners all these up he now has over one million dollars accumulated combined in all those accounts uh, from all of the deals that he has done. Now, we will help you with this. Uh, we do get people, I just had one yesterday, a gentleman uh, opened up uh, an account for himself, his spouse, and ceases for all three of his children. Uh, we will help you. We will customize and figure out what plan is good for you. We'll help you create your orbit of tax advantage dollars. Uh, and John will whiteboard this. Maybe some of you out there wanna do it right on the webinar next week. John will do that. And John will go into more detail about how we can help you customize with this worksheet and figure out, you know, if you do want multiple accounts, which ones are the best for you. And again, it's all free, folks, all free. So I want to talk a little bit about Mark. Uh, he's our investor of the year uh, from 2018, because a lot of people, uh, you know, will tell me, well, you know what, I'm kind of new, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, well, number one, I'd encourage you if there's any newbies on the call today and you're not a part of Better Than Success, I'd tell you, you better sign up and you better become a member and you better start going to these meetings, both these and live once they go back, uh, because all these stories that you heard from me, folks, are people that became members of their organizations, their local RIAs, their meetup groups, and, and they end up on my webinars because they've been very successful. They've been people that had a small amount of money or they didn't have, you know, hardly any money or they just didn't know anything, but they learned, they learned by going to these meetings, they learned by networking because there's a lot of smart folks that are in that room that can teach you, all right? 
um, a lot of experience in that room. So if you're not a member of Better Than Success, I'd highly encourage you to talk to Nicole and get, get, uh, get your membership and uh, maybe you'll be on one of my webinars one day. But anyway, that's what happened with Mark, okay? Mark learned from us from his broker. Mark is a, or, or was uh, an insurance salesman and he retired a few years ago. Uh, and he decided, you know what, I don't want to sit around in retirement and do nothing. He had, you know, a pretty good amount of money that he'd accumulated in his retirement, but regular old retirement, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Uh, and he said, you know, I'd like to go and uh, do some real estate, but I don't really know anything. So with the help of his broker, he came to a meeting, he came to a workshop, he learned a little bit from his broker and networking and meeting people at the monthly meetings. Uh, and he ended up doing, uh, over the last two and a half years, he's done five deals. Uh, and he became our investor of the year of 2018. And I'm going to share his first two deals in 2017 that he ever did. Here's Mark's first deal, a house rehab. Uh, again, he had money in his IRA, put him over into a self-directed IRA and started doing deals. Did two deals in 2018, three deals in 2019. This is his first two deals. They started in 2017, purchased his home, 89,000, 64,000 rehab, sold it 14 months later for 200,000, put $45,000 profit back into his IRA in his first deal that he ever did. I like sharing this picture. Mark tells his story a lot better than I do. Uh, the home on the left, that's what he walked into, the first thing that he saw. The home was built in 1970, uh, hadn't been touched for 47 years when he bought it. As you can see, it's still got the old sanitist wallpaper, the old cabinets, it's, it's got uh, the old uh, Formica countertops, the old tile. Linoleum, I think that was called back then. Uh, it, it's all pitted and torn up and discolored and <laughs> it looks pretty bad. But as you can see there, uh, in the after he brought into the 21st century and he was able to make you know over $45,000 on his very first deal. Now his second deal that happened, this happened while that first deal was going on. This was a few months later. He was at a meeting. He heard some people talking. He heard these gentlemen that were kind of in a pickle. So he went and approached them found out what they were doing. They were tearing a house down, replacing it with two homes, going to sell it, but uh, they ran out of money. Uh, they didn't have the money to, comp uh, to uh, fully fund the deal. Uh, they couldn't get loans. They were kind of stuck. So Mark said, okay, tell me what's going on. When are you going to have these homes uh, completed? When they are completed, when are you going to sell them? What are you going to sell them for? How much profit are you going to make? How much money do you need? So forth and so on. He created a real estate note, a very simple note. He ended up lending them the money in October of 2017 of 125,000. They were able to complete the project. 14 months later at the end of 2018 in December, uh, they gave him back a note of $199,000. They sold the property. They were happy. They made, him mo they made money. Uh, Mark made money, but more importantly, Mark put $74,000 profit back into this deal. So in two deals, at the end of 2018, he closed $119,000. His first two deals, this guy never did real estate in his life. He closed three more deals. Last year, started in 2018, closed the end of 2019, over six figures in those deals. Mark, in two and a half years, from five investments, has made over a quarter million dollars back into his IRA. And this guy's retired. He's making more money now than he ever made as an insurance salesman. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is a longtime client. I've got a couple here of case studies of Gary's I wanna share. He's a local gentleman here. Um, and Gary and Candace, and uh, John will talk a little bit about Candace's deals, but uh, they've been in real estate forever. And when they first came to us many, 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 many years ago, uh, Gary didn't have a lot of money in his Roth. So what his, his long-term goal was to partner with himself and to do deals and take money out of his Roth, take cash out of his pocket, because he did have the cash, and do these deals um, until he could accumulate enough money where he could do all of his deals 100% out of his Roth. So this was early in his career, obviously not his very first deal, uh, but when he, you know, one of the first ones he ever did, he found this property, the property was 41.5, okay? He did it proportionately, like we said, you have to do, so, out of the 41.5, he used 75% came out of his Roth, 25% cash out of his pocket or 10,375. The repairs were 30,000, has to be split the same, 75-25, so 75% out of his Roth, um, which is 22.5, 25% uh, cash out of his pocket, 7,500. So when all was said and done, the total investment was 71.5. 
roughly 53,000 out of his Roth, roughly 17,000, almost 18,000 out of cash. He sold the property for 10, or for 116, had 10,000 in closing costs. He put $8,600 cash back into his pocket, number one. But more importantly, he put 25,875 net tax-free profit back into his Roth. So he had 53,000 in the deal out of his Roth. He put the 53 and the 25 back into his Roth. It now gives him $78,000 to go on and do his next deal. We call it rinse and repeat and reload and reinvest. That's what he did. Let's fast forward to today. Now he's able to fund all of his deals. And this is a more recent deal within the uh, last couple of years. Uh, he fully funded out of his Roth. He found this property. 68,000, put 20,000 in improvements on the property. And again, nothing done proportionally. It's all 100% out of his Roth, so we don't have to worry about that. But he's currently, the last two years, uh, he's been renting this out for 900 per unit, 1,800 gross rent is what he's getting. Now he's got about $400 in expenses. Um, so uh, he's, he's uh, cash flowing, mailbox money, we call it. Uh, he's getting about, um, 1400 a month, roughly seven, almost 17,000 a year uh, is what he's cash flowing. Now he's been doing that for two years, folks. So he's cash flowed $34,000 tax free, has gone back into his Roth. He's got an ARV of 135 to 145. Let's say he sells that thing today for 145. I don't know if he's sold it yet or not. That 145 would go back into his Roth plus the cash flow of the 35 that he's accumulated over the last two years. He's now put $180,000 back, and his initial investment was $88,000. He made almost $100,000 in two years doing it this way, by sitting on it, collecting the rent, and doing the mailbox money. So you can see there's a lot of creative ways that you can do these things. Um, and this is one of my favorite. Uh, this is an action, they're called JV, uh, small dollar deals. Because again, a lot of people say, well, Dean, I, I don't have the money. I can't afford it. Uh, you know, well, let, let's show you how you can do this. And this is actually my partner, John Bowens. He does many of these JV deals. This is one of his, and he's going to show you a couple of ones that he's actually working on right now for his wife. But John is the bird dog. And what I mean by that is John, um, he's a member here of uh, the Greater Cleveland Real Estate Investors Association, as am I. Um, and, and he's met people over the years um, and he's met investors and he's met rehabbers. And what he does, he, he uh, gets these people involved in these JV deals. So John goes out, finds the property, gets somebody to buy it. He puts in a small amount as a JV, uh, as a joint venture, gets somebody to rehab it and then he sells it and he splits the profits accordingly. However, he wants to split the profits. Now, with the, that being said, we're not doing it proportionately. Now you cannot work with a disqualified person. You can't work with your spouse, your children, people like that. That you cannot do. You have to make sure you're doing this with not disqualified people because we're not doing the proportionate splitting. We're splitting this up however you want. And again, John will go over this into more detail. But basically, here's what he did. He found this property in Maple Heights for 37.5, put in 10,000 in rehab. Three months later, he sold the property for 97.5. There were $7,500 in closing costs. Uh, so he got nine, or he uh, netted 90,000 minus his initial 47,500 uh, that they put into the deal. That gave John a profit of 42,500. Here's how we split the deal up, all right? Joe, who is his investor, Joe put the majority of the money in for the 47,500. Joe put in 45,500. John put in 2,000 out of his Roth. There's your 47,500 sold the property, got the 42.5, here's how they split it, all right? Frank, the rehabber who got 10,000 to do the deal, all right, they gave Frank 5,000 right, right off the top of the 42.5 um, for being part of the deal. So Frank got an additional 5,000 above and beyond his 10 for the rehab. That left them 37.5, they split that up, 18,750, 18,750. So Joe got 18,750 back on his 45.5 investment. But John, investing only two grand, got $18,000.750 back. Joe made a 41% return for basically putting out 45.5 for three months, got almost $19,000 back for doing nothing. But more importantly, John put in only $2,000 out of the deal, got $18,750 back. So that puts him at over $20,000 in his Roth. 
to go on and do his next deal. And John's done many, 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 many of these deals. Um, and uh, so you can see, you can put in a small amount of money and you can actually make a lot of money if you continue to do these. And John's done many of these and he's gonna whiteboard the ones that he's actually got two or three he's working on right now. He's always got his money out there working for him. He is gonna whiteboard these things uh, and go over the uh, JV agreement. Uh, you know, you are gonna need a lawyer to help you to craft that thing and to create it. Uh, but John, you know, he'll even send you, you know, his, what his looks like. You can see it right there on the screen. But John will whiteboard some of his current deals that he's working on right now, some of his small dollar deals. So I hope you like all of those. Um, so now I just wanna talk about, you know, for those of you that are interested in opening up an account, that's great. That's not what I'm here for. Just shoot me an email, we can talk about it later. But it's really easy. It takes about 15 minutes to open up an account with us. It's done electronically. Again, all online. We don't do anything with you know, old fashioned paperwork. Uh, 15 minutes, we got your account open. Four simple steps. You open your account, first thing you do, you pick one of the ones. We figure out which one is best for you of the ones that we spoke about. We need a little bit of your personal information that uh, again, done electronically. But let me stop there, because this happens all the time. I just had a guy two weeks ago tell me, oh, I'm getting ready to close a deal, Dean. Uh, you know, and I've got money down on it. Can I put that into my, uh, you know, can I open up a Roth and put that into it? No, you can't because you already started the deal, number one. But number two, all right, number one, we got to have an account open and the account's got to be funded before you can start making any deals. So if you're transferring or converting money from somewhere else over to Equity Trust, it could take six to eight weeks for us to get that money. We can open up the account in 15 minutes. We can't do anything until it's funded. So by all means, make sure it's open, make sure it's funded before you start doing any deals, okay? We talked about how you can do that. You can just put money in a contribution. We can do a, a transfer, a rollover, a conversion, or contribution, a minimum of 500 bucks just to get an account started. Uh, you identify what your investment is by filling out a DOI. It's a direction of investment form. That just gives us details of what that investment is, a description, how much it costs, where we need to send the money. Uh, and John's going to send you this uh, for signing up for the Tuesday webinar. So don't worry about writing all these down. Um, he's going to send you again some free education. Uh, he's going to send you 100 different real estate investment options you didn't know were possible. These are just some of them right there. Again, don't worry about writing them all down. John's going to send you that for free. So you can see it's pretty simple. Open, fund, make an investment, manage the account. So equity trust. So who are we? Let me tell you a little bit about equity trust. Number one, we're in Ohio, we're in Westlake, suburb of Cleveland, about 20 miles to the west. As I mentioned, we've been at this for longer than anybody. Started in business in 1974, did one of the very first self-directed IRAs our founder did in the very early 80s. We hold almost 29 billion in assets under custody and administration. We are one of the only ones, I'm not gonna say we're the only one, we're one of the only ones out there. We started off as a brokerage service company, okay? Mid-Ohio Security. So, we have got the platform. You can do both your traditional stocks, bonds, and mutual funds with us, as well as your non-traditional investing. We also get into the digital currency and the cryptocurrency. We also do that for those of you interested in it. That's not my niche, but we can do that. If you're interested, shoot me an email. I'll get you in contact with the right people. Uh, we do business in all 50 states. Most important thing, I'm gonna go over here. We are in the next slide. We are an IRS approved custodian. Folks, you gotta be very careful when you're picking somebody. You know, Hopefully you'll pick equity trust, but whether you pick equity trust or whether you pick an administrator, facilitator, custodian, do your homework, I encourage you. Do your homework, do your due diligence. Ask these questions. You need to find out how are they regulated? Who are their principals? How long they've been doing this? What's their experience? How are they audited? What is their, you know, ask for a financial statement. There's three types of people out there. There's facilitators, administrators, custodians. We are a custodian. We are overseen by seven different government agencies, including the Department of Labor. We've got to meet those requirements or we could not do that. Facilitators, administrators do not. They probably don't even know the rules and regulations. All right. Uh, we, have the, uh, we have the authority to hold your assets, your investments, your property, and to issue the funds on your behalf. Facilitators and administrators do not. You're responsible for all paperwork. You're responsible for all IRS guidelines, rules, regulations, and paperwork submitted to them. We handle all that for you. Uh, you're on your own. 
So if you accidentally work with a disqualified person or you do what the, what's called a prohibitive transaction, uh, I don't want to tell you what's going to happen, but uh, you'll never have another IRA again. Uh, so I'd encourage you, do your homework, okay? We're going to open, we're going to administer your account. Facilitator can't. They got to find an administrator. Administrator's got to find a custodian. Just work with us to begin with, okay? They're going to take extra steps to move your funds to and from a custodian to complete the transaction. So do your homework. Find out who you're doing business with. I think you'll end up coming back to us uh, as far as our customer service. We've got highly skilled people. Uh, they average about five years of service. They've completed almost 9,000 investment transactions. And I'm, you know, about a third of those, over a third of them, just been in real estate purchase and sale. We talked about our portfolio management online, our My Equity, which John will go over uh, and show you the demo on Tuesday. Uh, I'd encourage you, uh, education, go to our website, www.trustetc. We've got a wealth of free educational material out there, all kinds of great stuff. Um, John will be giving this away also on his uh, webinar on Tuesday, and I'll let him talk about it. It's our fast track system. Um, basically, it's a home study course, 15 different digital modules. Um, it's online courses, talks about fixes and flips and buy and hold strategies, rules, regulations, a whole bunch more. Basically, is all you got to do is take, up, take us up on a free consultation, give me your phone number and your email, uh, and we'll give you this real estate fast track investor system for free. You can either get it today by calling email or emailing me that. We'll set that up, or on Tuesday, you can do that with John. Remember, the Ultimate Real Estate Investors Resource Guide, I'm going to send that to everybody on the call today. Don't forget to email that to me. I'll also be getting out the email here later uh, this weekend. Once I get a list of everybody on the call, I'll be sending you out, um, not only this, but I'll be sending you out the link as well as Nicole and Better Than Success will be sending you out the links too for those folks who uh, wanna join us on Tuesday, September 22nd from six to 9.30, the Wealth Building Workshop. Again, it's free. Make sure you register for that. And that's all I got. I'm all finished for today. Uh, so if. Uh, Thank you so much, Dean. That was great. Excellent. Uh, excellent. If there's any questions, anything in the chat, I'd be glad to stick around and uh, answer any of those for anyone. Yeah, let me see here. Um, if anybody, nobody put any questions in the Q&A, but I think we have here. Um, let me make a... uh, here we go. I've got them. I've got them in the chat. Let's yeah. See. So let me go up. The... All right. Let's see. Uh... Can we? Can someone post his email address? Yep. I already did that. Um, there's my email address. Right. It looks like Kemi asked a question, but I don't know. Kemi asked, how do you get around the rule that you cannot be directly involved in these types of investments? If I hire a GC, does that mean they decide everything? Can you still go to the property and check on work? Uh, you can go to the property and check on work. You can't swing the hammer, all right? That's the key. You cannot swing the hammer. You cannot do any of the physical work. You have to hire someone and you have to pay that person uh, to do that. And that person cannot be a disqualified person. So, you know, let's say you can partner with a disqualified person for the deal, but you couldn't get your spouse or someone up the linear tree to actually go do the do the labor work, nor can you do the labor work. So you have to be very, very careful with that to make sure. Now, who's gonna catch you? You know, who knows? Um, but uh, <laughs> don't take that chance. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah. Alicia asked, I wanna invest 100,000. Would it be best to take it out and then invest or, or transfer from my 401k? Uh, that, that's, um, that's hard to say, her 401k, number one, uh, and again, this is why we, we do the free consultations. Uh, we have to find out about that 401k. Is it a, number one, is it a 401k from a previous company that she used to work for? Now we can do that, we can take that money out. If it's a 401k for a current company that she's working for, chances are she's not gonna be able to take that money out what she can do is ask the administrator at her current company if this is a 401k with her current company that she works for, um, is do we have what's called an in-service transfer? 
Most of the time they don't, uh, but sometimes they do. If they have an in-service transfer and you're currently working for that company that has your 401k, you probably can't do it unless, unless they have that. So that's something we need to talk about. But if it's a 401k that's just sitting there that, that's you know from an old company, you know, say you left that company and the money's there, absolutely, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so, Corinne asked, what is the minimum money needed in IRA to start investing and making purchases? $500. You can open up an account with $500 um, and you can start doing uh, like John did, you know, a small dollar deals. Now, John, you know, uses 2000 out of his Roth, but we actually had one lady that came to us many, many years ago um, and she put $500 into a Roth account. Um, and what she started doing, and, and, and I didn't go over this, she started doing some wholesaling, okay? She'd go out, get the property, she'd you know, hang on to it, she'd wholesale it right away and make a few grand. That's how she built her. She actually went um, in about two and a half years from $500 to about $250,000. Um, or you can do the JV deal. So you can do wholesaling, you can do the JV deals. And John's gonna talk about both of those. Um, we call them small, da small dollar deals. You don't need, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, uh, you know, to, to be able to make money at this. Uh, we've got somebody here. I have a Roth. Um, should I get um, HSP? That probably means an HSA. Uh, well, um, you have to have a high deductible health plan in order to get one. So if you have a high deductible health plan, yes, uh, you are eligible one. Um, so, you know, that's kind of up to you. Um, I think it's a great account personally, the HSA, especially if you happen to be a healthy person and you don't have to take money out. I mean, I'm pretty healthy, so I got all kinds of money in mind. It's just sitting there. Should I ever, should I ever need it for health uh, things? But if you don't ever need it for, you know, health, uh, you know, health um, things, and <laughs> you got a pretty nice savings account uh, saved up. Um, okay, and they great. Have, I have. Yeah, they've Corinna. got another... Yeah. Uh, um, let me, everyone, please put all your questions in the Q&A. Please refrain from putting them in the chat. Yeah. Uh, but he did ask yeah. another question. I have a Roth IRA. Should I get, should I get an H? Wait, did he just ask? Yeah, that's the one I just yeah, answered. Just yeah. yeah. So then Corinne asked, I have a 457, not a 401k. Would I be able to invest? Uh, abs absolutely, you could. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Not a problem. Okay. Redemption Development asks, can I buy out my spouse, my spouse's partner from another deal they are currently involved in? My partner is a sole proprietor in, in their LLC. Oh, I'm not sure what they want to do. They want to buy out. They want to buy out their spouse's partner. Uh, I'm not sure I understand fully and I'd have some questions. So whoever answered, whoever asked that question, uh, shoot me an email with your phone number. We can, we can talk about that. Um, you know, there are some questions uh, okay. that I'd have to, that I'd have to know about that. Okay. Ashley asked, what amount is considered a high deductible health plan? Hey, that's a great question. You know, that is a great question. Um, the high deductible health plan um, has to have, uh, it's uh, $3,300 for a single person um, and for a married couple, it, 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 uh, it, it doubles. You have to have, you know, that's the minimum it's got to have. Okay. DeVoe Sherman asked, I am self-employed. What other investment accounts should I have? Well, you're self-employed, so you could do, you know, the best one is the uh, 401k solo, but again, there's questions we need answered to see if you qualify for that. If you don't, we'd have to look at the simple and the SEP. Those are number one for self-employed people like yourself. So the simple, the SEP, the solo 401k. Again, we got to figure out which one you qualify for because you may or may not qualify for all of them or none of them. Uh, but that doesn't mean you still can't have the others. You know, you can still have a Roth, you can still have a CISA, you can still have the traditional, uh, and you can still have the um, HSA if you have a health deductible plan. So you can qualify for any of them. Okay, great. Christine Johnson asks, what about FSA account flexible spending account? Uh, we do not do FSAs. Uh, we do HSAs, as I mentioned earlier on that slide, the FSA, the flexible spending account, and, and I'm not a lot familiar with them because we don't do them, 
if you don't use that money, you do lose them. Um, so that's why we always tell people, hey, you know, this is an HSA. It works a lot differently uh, and you can keep that money in there, you know, indefinitely in the HSA. Uh, with the FSA, you don't. And again, we don't do FSAs of flexible spending accounts. Okay, so reduction development. Um, this is the person who had asked that question that you needed more details on. Um, redemption, please email Dean. I think in order for him to give you more insight, in regards to your scenario, he needs to ask you a few more questions, yeah. more details. Yeah. So his email is in the chat and it's also on the screen right now. So please refer refer to that. Yeah, yeah, because that may be a long conversation. So yeah. we don't want to do that now, yeah. Yeah, so if anybody has any more questions, um, please now is your time to put them in the Q&A um, so we can get them answered real quickly. Yeah, and like I said, you know, my email's up there. If you happen to think of something later, you can always email me later. Um, you know, shoot me an email. If you want to talk about, you know, if you do have some interest in opening up an account, uh, you know, again, just email me. We'll, we'll get together. We'll do the free, the, the consultation. I, I, you know, it's free, folks. It costs you nothing for the consultation. Um, you know, and, and maybe it won't be right for you, or maybe you're not going to qualify, you know, for whatever one we're talking about. Basically, we're just going to figure out, you know, is this right for you? Is it not right for you? If it is right for you, okay. Would you like to move forward? You know, we move forward. If you don't, maybe a week, maybe six months, maybe a year down the road, then we move forward. So, you know, we're not going to push you to open up an account. You know, we're going to give you as much material and as much education so you can make the decision if this is the right thing for you to do or not. Uh, but you know, hey, everybody should have some type of retirement account. I don't care how old you are. You know, you really need to have some type of re retirement account. And of course, being in real estate, these are the best ones to have because you're familiar with real estate. I'm no real estate expert. You guys know the real estate end of the business. Let us help you with the retirement part of the business so that so you can build your wealth. Okay. Um, so actually, two more people had, had some questions that they asked. Janisha Jones asked, if funds in HSA aren't used due to a person being healthy, could those funds be used for other purposes? Uh, yes, those funds can be used for other purposes, but there is a catch. Um, you would have to uh, pay taxes on them because you're not using them for qualified medical expenses. If you're using it for qualified medical expenses, no taxes. You know, if you take it out to use for something else, uh, you are going to get hit with tax then, but you can take it out and use it, but you will be responsible for, uh, for taxes. Okay, and Redemption Development asks, can an equity trust account partner with a whole life cash value account on a deal? No. Okay. Nope. All right, so um, Ashley Wilkerspoon said, my, my spouse recently passed away. What options do I have to use his deferred compensation funds without penalty? Okay, his deferred compensation funds without penalty. I'm not sure I can answer that, um, you know, because I don't know where that compensation is coming from. I don't know what the, you know, um, I'm thinking it's coming from his old company or maybe a life insurance or something. I don't know what their rules and regulations are. You'd have to, you'd probably have to ask them um, about those compensation funds. And, and uh, you know, we always tell people, you know, consult with your attorney, consult with your lawyer, consult with your, uh, you know, financial person, your accountant, because, you know, that's not what we are. Uh, you know, you'd probably want to check with them to make sure, you know, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. You know, can we use these compensation funds? And if so, you know, is there a penalty? You know, there may be a penalty, there may not be a penalty. So, you know, I, I can't answer that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so if anybody has any more questions right now for Dean, please ask. Oh, okay. Ashley asks, at what rate are you taxed at if you use HSA plan for non-medical expense? And is this annually every time used or just a one-time fee? Uh, you are, okay. You are taxed on whatever your tax rate, whatever tax rate that you fall under uh, at that particular time. 
uh, and it's based on your 1040. You know, it's based on how much money you make. So whatever your filing is, and you paid, you know, 22 percent, 28 percent, 30 percent, that is what you're going to be taxed if you're using that money for non-medical expenses. Um, and uh, yeah, you're going to get taxed every time you use it. If you're, you know, let's say you make three um, distributions in the course of a year, yeah, you're going to get taxed three times. Okay. Um, it looks like those are all the questions. All right. So, Dean, you want to stop sharing your screen so I can finish sharing mine. That would be great. Okay. Let me. Uh... And thank you so much, Dean. That was absolutely amazing. I think um, our members got go. a lot of. Yeah, there's a lot of information. And, you know, it's funny because I only covered the basics. I only covered the 101s. Um, John, you know, on Tuesday, you know, he goes over about three and a half hours. I mean, he really gets into a lot more detail than I do. And he'll also work with the people on the call. You know, so if anybody out there on this call today, if you've got a deal or you're thinking about a deal, bring those numbers uh, and give them to John. John will actually live whiteboard them you know, and figure out the best scenario for you. Thank you. So everyone tune in to that um, with John. I think it'll, he'll go into much more detail mm -hmm. in regards to a lot of the information from today. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that we'll be sending out an email with that information for us to be able to join that. So look forward to that in your email. And, um, I just have a few more announcements for the league and for non-members. So thank you again, Dean. That was absolutely amazing. We do appreciate you joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, of course, of course. All right, so um, members, I'm just gonna close out the regular mastermind as we always do. So I'll be speaking to, I'll be speaking to the non-members in regards to our membership. So if you guys wanna log out, you guys can definitely do that. Um, and so let me finish this out. So we are the largest real estate club in Philly. We started in November, 2016 with four people in the first meeting. We have over 400 members. Um, we used to be on, uh, we used to have Wednesday and Thursday night masterminds. And on a Wednesday night at our office at the BTS headquarters, this is typically what our office would look like. And this is how many people would be there. Um, but due to COVID, you know, we're now on a virtual platform, but it has worked out because we have people joining from all across the country. And so we're able to, you know, have members from everywhere and we're able to help people out from ev everywhere. So that's great. Once COVID, everything is settled with COVID, we might, um, you know, we might go back to having meetings. We're still discussing on how that's going to look for us, but I'm not sure if it'll be every Wednesday. We, we shall see. Um, we do have a chapter in Philly and NYC, but right now that doesn't really, that doesn't really matter due to the fact that we're a virtual platform at this point. Um, and so we have masterminds every Wednesday. That's the Philly mastermind, but we have members that speak from all over the country now. And we have every other Thursday is the NYC mastermind, but everything is virtual. So um, all of our masterminds are recorded and put into archives for our members to access 200 plus lecture recordings. So every mastermind that we've done has been recorded. It is in our back office. If you are a member, you do have access to all of those lectures. It's just definitely a great feature. Um, and just, there's just so much knowledge that we've we have come across due to many of the speakers that we've had. And so this is always just such a great fe feature of being a member. Um, and every Tuesday, we have our members only deal hunting lunch hour on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. That is a members only event. And we definitely have a lot more deals that are presented in the, in the, mem in the deal hunting lunch hour. And we do, we do see how to analyze a good deal. So um, it's only members only and you can only be a member to be there. Two Saturdays per month, we do have uh, different kind of events. We have the real estate speed dating event, which isn't, isn't for actual speed dating, but it is for trying to find a real estate partner or, or you know, so, someone to team up with to do a deal. Um, we have real estate question Q&A, real estate financing Q&As, 
we have, you know, event kind of like today, like we had with Dean. So we always have that two Saturdays per month. It's always a great time. And we always learn so much as well. We have a newsletter that goes out twice a week. It has so much real estate information, grant information, and it's not just limited to um, Philly or New York. It's information regarding real estate from all across the nation. So, you know, that's always a great thing. And in regards to grants, you know, who doesn't want free money? The fact that it's always in there in our newsletter that we have access to grants and different grants that can help us in all different areas in regards to real estate or credit or financing is always great. And that is members only. And also in our back office, we have new members of classes. So if you are someone who's just getting started in real estate, we do have new members classes that, you know, go over the basics of real estate that can get you up to speed. We have hard money loan lessons, which educates you on the, um, I guess you would say the requirements or, you know, what hard money does for a real, est real estate investor. We have playlists that have been created. And also, we also have half off PA real estate sales professional courses. Um, I took these sales classes at Temple and they were around $1,500. <laughs> And this is before I was a member. And so, you know, now, you know, I wish I had just, if, if, you know, 2020 is hindsight, looking back, I could have saved a lot of money had I just waited to be a member to do that. But, you know, that's always a great thing and only members have access to that. And so if any non-members have questions, you can go ahead and ask the questions now, I'll give you a minute to ask the questions real quick. I just wanted to add a couple of things here. Um, you know, I'd encourage you folks that are that are thinking about this. I, I highly encourage you to become a member of Better Than Success uh, because you're, you're going to hear from people like me. You're going to hear from other educators. You're going to get a lot of valuable information. You know, don't join and then do nothing. Join, get engaged, okay? do the things that they're talking about, go to the events. I got to tell you, I've been doing this a long, long time. Now I was out at one of their live events. It's probably been about a year. And I love the fact that when I was done, I networked with a lot of the people there when I was finished. And again, I got a lot of experience at doing what I do, but I, I met a couple gentlemen there at the meeting, the live meeting I did last year uh, at Better Than Success. And I learned some stuff. I learned some stuff. You know, education is so, so valuable. I highly encourage you, you know, if you're thinking about it, join. You're, you're going to get so much value and so much information. Uh, and you're going to be very successful if you do what we tell you what to do. You are going to be very successful. So I just wanted to throw that in real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Dean. Yeah, I, I definitely agree um, how I first got started with BTS. I was a member first before I, before I joined the management team. And, um, you know, I've gained so much value and insight from being a member. And so I would encourage everyone, if you aren't a member, I would encourage you to become a member. Yep. You know, and the value is right now we have the 257 sign up fee and it's an $84.99 a month for the membership. Um, and we are, you know, once you are, once you start as a member at, you are grandfathered in at that monthly rate, but you know, we will eventually we will be going up to a hundred dollars a month. Um, and so I would highly encourage that if you guys want to save some money and not spend a hundred dollars a month and you want to join now, now is the time. And we do have a month. So right now we do have a code. We have a, um, code, the code is zero nine one nine and you get 33% off the sign up fee. Um, so I think that comes out to like one seventy two, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I'm, I'm, I believe that's what it would come out to for that monthly fee, or you can have the annual option and that you do with doing the annual option, you do avoid the sign up fee altogether. Um, so you guys can visit us at better than success.com slash BTS R E L. And you can access, use that code zero nine one nine to get the 33% off. Or if you want to use the annual option, you can do better than success.com backslash annual. And um, you can join us there and, you know, do the, annual option payment fee. And so that does conclude our presentation for today. Um, and so anyone has any questions, I'll give you a second, but I think, I think you all got the gist. 
And I want to thank you all for joining us tonight or today, this morning, <laughs> not tonight, this morning. <laughs> and we appreciate everyone coming out and watching. And again, thank you so much, Dean. We appreciate you. And everyone stay tuned for that information in your email for um, the event that will jo that John will be hosting. Yep. Excellent. Thanks again for having me. And uh, hey, everybody, have a great rest of your Saturday morning and afternoon and evening and weekend. And, and evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Hi, guys. Thank you. This is Nicole. Thank you guys for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Genova. Yes. Have yes. a great Saturday. Dean, I'll email you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye.